even old, burnt vinyl played on a not so expensive turntable has the magic of good sound. The thing is that, when recording vinyl, the times of dementia of the sound signal are recorded absolutely identical to the original, and at the same time, vinyl has disadvantages such as a not very flat frequency response, vinyl has quite a strong detonation at low frequencies, vinyl has, shall we say, problems setting up the table itself. When you buy vinyl, you need to adjust the arm, when you buy vinyl, you need to adjust the phono stage, you need to align the needle, you need to perform a whole bunch of drum dances in order to get high quality sound from vinyl. Installing the turntable absolutely level is also a stumbling block to get good sound quality. It is desirable that the table is absolutely flat. It is desirable that the table be made of good, high quality stone that suppresses vibrations. In short, when listening to vinyl, you get a whole bunch of disadvantages, but you will be rewarded with absolutely identical analog sound. Despite the static noise, despite the ingress of dust on the record, despite the fact that the stylus is clogged with the same dust, this creates a fairly audible noise screen for obtaining high quality sound. But our brain easily copes with this noise, filters it out and at the output, you hear a cool, lively sound that has the magic that Sparkle has. And in principle, almost no DAC in the world is able to convey this Sparkle. In the process of digitization, an analog audio signal, one very interesting thing happens, the temporal dementia of, the signal gets lost. Digitally encoded sounds are not reproduced exactly at the right time and not quite at the speed that is needed. They seem to be reproduced in time and at the same time, something is wrong. True vinyl lovers will never and never switch to digital sources, precisely because they do not hear this difference, they feel it. In this case, we are not even talking about millisecond deviations, but about deviations that are even less than a millisecond, this is pico of a second. And in principle, only one DAC in the world is able to restore an incorrectly digitized signal, absolutely exactly in relation to the original. The thing is that, most modern analog to digital converters and digital to analog converters do not have enough power in order to encrypt absolutely, accurately, and why decrypt an audio signal with absolute accuracy. Most modern DACs use a very small number of points and interpolation exactly in the time dimension, at the same time, Dave has such such interpolation points, attention. 167,000. That is why the power of the Dave is a thousand times higher than the power of most ordinary, modern, good DACs. Despite the fact that modern ADCs, and DACs are not able to qualitatively encrypt the temporary signal dementia and decrypt it in the future. The DACs work very well with the frequency response, the DACs work great with the dynamic range, the DACs have excellent technical characteristics. Digital recordings are very easy to make. Digital recordings are very easy to process, digital recordings are very convenient to store, digital recordings are very convenient to listen to. You can make a playlist of your favorite songs. With vinyl, all this will not work, firstly, you will listen to the noises that I spoke about at the very beginning, secondly, you will be forced to listen to the whole album and there is no possibility at all to make any playlist from vinyl, thirdly, Getting good quality vinyl records is a problem and, true vinyl lovers spend a lot of time getting first presses that really sound good. The process of obtaining high quality sound from vinyl is quite painstaking. You will need years of research, dozens even perhaps hundreds of experiments, in order to get the sound out of vinyl that vinyl is basically capable of. I have great respect for real, hardened, burnt, vinyl lovers who never, ever deviate from their truth, because vinyl, despite all its shortcomings, actually sounds amazing and only one dick in the world is able to repeat pure analog sound. All other decks that exist on the market at the moment, unfortunately, are confused in the temporary decoding of the audio signal, and this is a big problem.
Studies have shown that for a person, the amplitude frequency response is not as important as the temporal dementia of sound reproduction. The times of dimension, I mean here that all sounds must be played in time, at the same moment as they were in the original, and they must be played at the same speed, and with the same duration, as they were in the original. When you listen to vinyl, you hear it because it's mechanical. This applies to any other analog source sound, for, example, tape, cassette or any other sources if they still exist. But, absolutely the whole figure sins in that, the time dimension is shifted, it is out of sync. This desynchronization, at home, cannot be measured. But it is absolutely clear and clearly felt. Another problem is that if you're listening to digital audio all the time and you have nothing to compare to what analog audio sounds like, you won't notice a problem. But, as soon as you listen, analog then switch back to digital, it's really difficult, because digital, compared to analog, sounds tougher. Of course, even an inexpensive digital, not even an expensive DAC, is able to fully work out the frequency range, even an inexpensive DAC is quite calmly able to show a good dynamic range, and high, really high sound quality, but, more than one DAC will not give you a full-fledged analog sound no matter how hard he tries. Dave was developed by a British scientist, development engineer, programmer, Rob Watts. It took him quite a long time to develop this DAP, and now am I'm not talking about weeks or months, but actually about years. If I'm not mistaken, the piece of time that Rob Watts needed to come to an understanding of how, to get an analog back from a digital, it took about 20 years to restore the corrupted digital. Interestingly, Rob Watts had to completely deviate from the standard SAP construction schemes. Dave works on a program code that consists of a million lines of code. In order for you to understand the scale of the disaster, in the four-volume War and Peace, Leo Tolstoy used about 500,000 words, well, Google it if you don't believe me. If we assume that at least five words are written in each line, then it turns out that War and Peace consists of 100,000 lines. Now, here in Dave. There are over a million lines of code, and I don't really know how long a line is in the code. Maybe they are such that they won't even fit on the biggest screen, the biggest cinema. If we perform simple, arithmetic calculations, then it turns out that 40 volumes of program code are stuffed into this stack, and in order for all this to work, this stack is built on some kind of gate arrays. My little brain is not able to understand what gate arrays are, but the standard layout of the DAX is no longer suitable here, and in order for the DAC to work under the control of million line program code, its power, as I said at the beginning, is approximately a thousand times higher than the power of a conventional DAC. Another key factor that Rob Watts used when creating Dave is the attention to low audible sounds. As you know, the sound range that a person hears is approximately 0 decibels to 120 decibels. Usually, most DACs, most analog sources, have a very hard time reproducing low audible sounds. The so-called micro detail. In order to get high micro details, and to hear low audible sounds on tape, for example, you need very good technique and very good recordings that take into account all the technical nuances of the equipment. In order to hear detail on vinyl, you need to overcome all noise, all detonations, you need to align the needle, you need to jump with a tambourine, and only then, will you get absolutely accurate spatial reproduction. The second key factor is attention to low pitched sounds. That is, to micro detail. And, Rob Watts, managed to teach this stack to reproduce sounds that are recorded at a level of up to minus 300 decibels. In other words, the micro detail of this stack is truly amazing. Why did Rob Watts do all this? Engaged in writing a million lines? Engaged in, training this stack to reproduce low audible sounds? The idea of Rob Watts is that when listening to music, when listening to music recordings, you should hear sounds at the same distance they were at the time of recording. 
that is, if you listen to the ringing of the bell cathedral, which is recorded at a distance of hundreds of meters, then you should feel and hear that these sounds reach you from, a distance of hundreds of meters. Most good DACs give a stage depth of about 2 or 3 meters, very good DACs give a stage depth of 5 meters and that's it. But, here guys, we are promised analog infinity. The third factor that made Dave able to compete and even surpass analog sound sources is the internal mechanics which is completely different from all other DACs. That is, it is a non-standard, product. Having a non-standard internal stuffing and having an absolutely non-standard approach to programming the internals of this SAP, Dave has an absolutely non-standard appearance. Most DACs look very different, a rectangular box and a couple of knobs, a couple of buttons. Here, you see what a fantastic cool building. The feeling that it is simply machined, sawn out of some kind of solid bit, of aluminium or metal. The top cover is more than a centimeter thick, for sure. Dave, both internally and externally, is a work of art. Pay attention, on the top cover, the sinusoid which is drilled. On the one hand, this is an air vent, on the other hand, it is a symbol of the fact that the DAC is very carefully and accurately related to the reproduction of an audio signal, which by the way has, the shape of a sinusoid, on the right, on the panel are all kinds of knobs, and spherical buttons. Here you can switch inputs outputs, select options, adjust the volume. If the DAC works for you in the preamplifier mode, the DAC can also produce an unregulated analog output. It uses a high precision digital volume control. Usually, on most DACs, on most devices, the volume control simply changes the bit depth, thus, there, lower you turn the volume, the lower the quality of the signal you hear through your speakers. Here, the regulator is high precision, and when the volume level changes, the bit depth of the signal does not change. I mean, it's a completely different principle. Also, Dave has a display. When I was getting ready to record this video about, I thought that the display was a little simple, considering all the technological stuff that was invested in Dave, considering all the work, effort that Rob Watts needed to write this million lines of program code, to teach Dave how to properly restore a ruined digital signal. Well, this display is simple. But in fact, when you look at it live, and not on the photo, and not on the video, this display looks very attractive and relevant. I did not really like, the option to replace the color of all kinds of letters. Dull blue, with light letters, best reflects the essence of this sap. On the front panel, there is a headphone output for 6.35 jack. A headphone amplifier is built in at a reference level and you can connect headphones with any load, even up to 600 ohms. According to the manufacturer, even high impedance headphones can handle Dave. Today, I was listening to Dave with my vintage Sony MDRXP1000. Of course, they are not a couple at all, this DAC costs about 12,000 euros, and these headphones can be bought, well, literally for a couple of hundred, my friend, but, nevertheless, in order to understand the character itself, these headphones are enough. On the back of Dave, it's pretty confusing. Well, firstly, there are two linear ca outputs, there is a balanced XLR output, there are four digital inputs, which are called B and C. These inputs are coaxial and work on the principle of coaxial data transmission. If you need to plug an ordinary RCA tulip here, then you will have to get such an adapter. BNC inputs are arranged in pairs. If you want to give Dave a signal with a frequency of up to 384 kHz, then you use one input, but if you have a cord source, then you can connect it with two cables with BNC plugs and then Dave is quite calmly able to reproduce a signal with a frequency of up to, so. I look at a piece of paper, a frequency of up to 768 kHz. This is the most most tower, which is generally achievable in principle. I don't even know if anything unusual can be heard at such a high signal frequency. Because, as, 
far as I know from the experience of communicating with recording studios, the maximum that a person can hear is, in principle, high res format 2496, everything above is great, of course, but it's almost impossible to hear the difference. Also, on the back panel, there are two optical inputs, one input for connecting a computer, well, either Windows or Mac via USB. The USB input is galvanically, isolated, which means that by connecting a computer to it, which in itself is a whole cloud of all kinds of electromagnetic interference, you need a DAC, send only a digital signal, all interference will be delayed. For this, there is a galvanic isolation. DACs, which do not have galvanic isolation, send all interference further, to sound emitters, that is, to speakers. The last, digital input, that is on the back call is XLR. I don't really know what kind of format it is, but there is such a connection. Dave has some pretty interesting technical specs. Despite all its advancement and technical equipment, the frequency range with which Dave works is from 20 Hz to 20,000 Hz. This is the range that a person can hear quite calmly. It is interesting that the creators of Dave did not follow the lead of populists who claim that a ceiling of 40,000 Hz is completely calmly heard by people and is necessary for high quality sound transmission. Actually it is not. As well as ultra low sounds, which are located below 20 Hz. There is no need to reproduce them, because a person, in principle, does not hear them. He can only feel them. The same applies to ultra sound, which is located above 20 kHz. A person can feel ultrasound only if you attach bones to your skull. There is a resonator, such as a metal tuning fork, that vibrates at that high frequency. In addition, here is excellent channel separation, which is equal to 127 decibels, Dave has an excellent dynamic range figure, which is also 127 decibels. Dave is able to reproduce both the quietest and the loudest sounds, and this is very important for sound reproduction. Dave, supports digital signal reception up to 768 kilohertz at 32 bits. That is, this, guys, is some kind of space. Before coming to Stereo Plus at Ganibu Damai's 22 in Riga to listen to Dave, I listened to some rather expensive systems in different places. It was both digital systems and analog systems. Listening digital and analog systems, I clearly found myself feeling that in the light of the knowledge gained, I like analog sound more. And when I came to listen to Dave, I was still surprised by what I heard, clean, clear, warm, incredibly warm analog sound, which basically just came from space. We listened to Dave with Proc D48 acoustics. Plinius Hiato amplifier, by the way, there is also a video about this amplifier on, the channel. The amplifier and acoustics cost about 10,000 euros, it's like, not quite a match for Dave, because Dave is quite easily able to work with acoustics and amplifiers of a much higher price segment. Interestingly, comparing the sensations of listening to Dave, in principle I can tell you that the sound of Dave is much more even, soft, musical, natural than the sound of even more, expensive digital sources and the sound of more expensive equipment. The reason for this is that Rob Watts did an excellent job of temporal interpolation of the digital signal in order to restore the original speed of the analog original signal. And when you listen to Dave, you just dissolve in this music, because the music does not cut the ear, it is really soft. No matter how good digital, sources I have to listen to, digital sharpness always hurts my ears. And when I listened to Dave, I caught myself feeling like I was listening to music on an analog studio's studio. Approximately, this level of sound gives a studio, which is recognized by the entire world sound community and Dave gives approximately the same. That is, it is a real competitor to vinyl and tapes, which reproduces, first of all, an absolutely even frequency range, it has excellent sound dynamics, it has excellent rendering of images, 
which just blurs the space in which you are. And, thanks to its digital nature, you can choose any playlists you want and you don't have to bother with stylus alignment, you don't have to worry about adjusting the tone neum, setting the table and other vinyl delights, headaches, Dave, you can just bet and he will immediately play. Guys, Dave, this is a great DAC who brings back the lost spark of life to digital sound. It's damn good to listen to recordings on Dave that have space in their potential, because the layering of space that I heard here is incomparable to anything I've heard before, well, except for the original live sound. When listening in my headphones, I, felt. Sony itself is quite voluminous, because the speaker is located quite far from the ear, here the pillow is 5 centimeters and their sound is really voluminous. But, Having connected to Dave, I realized that the sound that I received from my Sony with the Fio X7 player, which is considered high-end, in terms of volume, does not go to any comparison with what Dave gives. Putting their, headphones on my head, I got the impression that I was in the sphere of the concert, which sounds around me at a rather considerable distance. The membrane in Sony is 70 mm, which is quite a lot and, in principle, not every portable amplifier is able to cope with this membrane, despite the fact that the resistance of these headphones is quite small. And with an amplifier, I always have to, shaman in order for the headphones to sound full. So, Dave, working with this large 70mm membrane was no problem at all. It is absolutely clear, reproduces all the sounds that need to be played. Offset, thanks to Rob Watts. I also want to say that the premium hi-fi channel is also developing to improve the sound quality to improve the video quality. I need to update the equipment on which I shoot, my videos. Right below the video, there is a thank you button and all donations received, all thank you received are sent straight to the equipment upgrade.